As a creative, ideas come to me all the time in random places, and Notion plays basically a catch-all for all of those ideas. Some ideas are big ideas, and some ideas are small ideas, but at the end of the day, they all live within Notion to either grow or just be an idea that I had in passing. When it comes to developing ideas into videos, I ask myself, who is this video for? and why am I making this video? And from there, I'm able to answer if this video has the legs to be a long form video. And from there, I formulate a title. And that title ultimately gets me going on what the next steps are for the video. And for me, when it comes to titles, I put down all of my ideas somewhere, I formulate some sort of question as a title, and then I run it through AI and ChatGPT and see different options of different ideas of titles. And this is an example of using AI to help me with my everyday workflow. I've used Notion for years. I've used many different project management systems, but for some reason I always find myself coming back to Notion. One other reason I always come back to Notion is the AI tools. There's a tool called Improve Writing, which literally improves my writing. And what it does is it doesn't take away from my tone or my delivery. It just polishes up my sentences a little bit better than I can, just not being the best writer. Every single project, every single video, every single post I put on any of my socials starts with Notion, and ends with Notion. Now my workplace is broken up into two sections. It is personal content and professional content. And those are what they sound like. Personal content is all things YouTube, all things my social channels, all things where I am the content. And then my professional content is when I'm making content for other people. That's when I'm freelancing. That's when I'm being contracted out to do things. But we're gonna to touch on the personal content today. So the first thing within my workplace is the status. And this is what starts off every project. This is how everything is categorized within my workplace and sorted. We have discovery and concept. And any idea that gets put into Notion at any time of the day, no matter what it is, if it's a big idea, if it's a small idea, if it's a full video, if it's just one word, it gets put in as discovery and concept, knowing that I have to build it out more or just explore more possibilities on how this can be a full video or if this is just something that can be thrown away and maybe talked about at a different time. And then next up is what you'd expect in any creative workflow. We have the pre-production, the production, and the editing. And those are exactly what they sound like. Pre-production is done before any of the shooting, any of the editing takes place. And what pre-production is, is basically playing producer. It's figuring out when you're doing things, how you're doing things, what days you're doing things, storyboard, scripting, all of that stuff is all done in that pre-production phase. And then once you get put into production is when the cameras are up and you're rolling. Right now I'm in production. And sometimes that takes one day, sometimes that takes two days, but usually production for this type of content takes about a day or two. And then we have the editing. And that's once I'm done with production and I'm talking about, I'm not taking the camera out to shoot for this video again. That's when I hit the editing phase and that's when I really lock in and start putting a story together. And then finally published. And when I say everything starts with Notion and ends with Notion, it ends with this publishing tab. And once I put the URL in, the video's live, I hit publish, it automatically takes whatever video I've been working on and all of the steps and everything within it and moves it over to the publish tab where all of my published videos live. And then I have the type of content that lives within my personal brand. YouTube videos, and that is long form videos. Community posts, and that's when I post in my YouTube community, an IG short or an IG reel. And that's where a lot of those smaller ideas end up going and they become shorts or reels and nine by 16 vertical videos. And then Instagram and Twitter posts. I like to have captions built out. I like to have captions thought about and I like to have them live in one place. So I'm not in the app trying to type out a caption. I like just to be able to copy and paste. And then finally, a couple other things you'll see on this area is the shoot date and the publish date and what those are is what they sound like. Publish date is when it's gonna go live and the shoot date is the day I plan shooting it. That's what I call the marketing and the admin work. It's basically the being a producer in the phase work and making sure everything gets put down onto paper, everything is planned out thoroughly and you're not rushing yourself, you're giving yourself time to do things. And I mean, it is what it's what it sounds like. It's being the producer of the film, that being my YouTube channel and the videos on there. 
But then we get to jump into the fun stuff. And as a creative, the fun stuff is the storyboarding. It's the writing and it's the script. Now the scripting and the writing sound the same, but I think of them in different ways. I think of the scripting as more formulating the idea. So for example, with this video, I formulated what my ideas were as I was walking into work one day. I was walking into work and I had an idea of what this was gonna look like, but I had more of a bigger idea. So I was able to write down like the four chapters I thought this video was gonna be. I worked the entire day, I came home, I came back to Notion, and that's when really the scripting came together. I was able to kind of expand on each chapter. I was able to jump into Notion and have references of what I wanted to talk about. And at that point, you're not in the writing phase, but you're still in the scripting phase. You're figuring out what each chapter is gonna, is gonna be. You're figuring out kind of what that story is gonna be. And for me, writing's been something I've never been strong at, and I still don't think I'm strong at it to this day but it's the point where you get to share your individualism. You get to share your creativity and you get to have your tone and your voice be what the driving piece is. You get to make those decisions on what type of things you want to be full sentences. And that's where I use the writing tools the most. You get to decide what things you wanna bullet point and paraphrase about. And when it comes to testing tech, where the scripting and the writing comes into play is sometimes I'm just jotting down notes all day. If I'm testing an iPhone, if I'm testing some AirPods, I'm testing notes on things that I'm discovering throughout the day. And I come back to Notion later and what that scripting is becomes writing and I start to write my ideas and I start to put it into really my own words. That's how I really separate what scripting is and what writing is. And as they do sound the same, I do think they are very, very different. But then where I really nerd out about is the next step, and that's the storyboarding. Once you have the script, you have the bones of the video, you have the writing, you have everything you wanna talk about, that's when you can really plan out how this thing's gonna look and how this thing's gonna feel. And for me, I still use Frameset, which is something I've talked about on past videos, where I pull reference frames from popular TV shows, movies, commercials, all of those things, and bring them together to really make a feel for my video, almost like a mood board. And each video has that. And from there, I'm able to figure out how I wanna light things, what kind of frame rates I wanna use, what kind of lenses I wanna use in focal lengths. All of those things are planned out, basically shot by shot. But at the end of the day, like that is the visual representation of your mind out on a timeline. And that's where you get to have a lot of the fun. And that's where the writing, the scripting, and the storyboarding all come together to really show what your unique visual image is out to others. And then the details. This is after all of that. After you're done with the video, after you finish the video, after you've had a few versions out and you've kind of gone through and it's sitting in your timeline and it's just a, a beautiful timeline, you got the details. Title, description, chapters, and thumbnail. You hear it often, especially with YouTube, is good content's gonna get played, it's gonna get seen no matter what, but sometimes you need a little bit of help and that's where the title comes into place. And I talked about I like to get the title before I start the video because it ultimately shapes how I make the video. So once I made the title from the jump, it's never the same title at the end. I get that title from the jump, I make the video, and the video formulates sometimes a new title, and then I go and run that through ChatGPT and AI and figure out some options of some titles based off of what the video became. So you get to see the evolution of what the idea started as to what the idea ended up as. And then what plays well with the title is the thumbnail. The title and the thumbnail are two of the most important things besides the video. And it sounds cliche and it sounds like people have said this over and over again, but I can't, like when you go to click, you are clicking on a title, you're clicking on a thumbnail and that is opening up your 10 minute video. So thumbnail is important and thumbnail for me, What's been nice about YouTube is the A-B testing, or I guess A-B-C testing. I was never ever able to focus in and choose one thumbnail just because that's not how my mind works. I'm always trying to have multiple, multiple options. So now the fact that I can put three options in and over a span of time see which one is performing the best has been something that has been very special that YouTube has been offering. So I'm able to be a little bit more creative and I'm able to try different things and see what works. And as I've been doing the ABC testing since it came out, I've been able to see kind of a trend in the videos that YouTube's liking, but also seeing a style in the way I'm creating thumbnails. In short, that's how I use Notion. That's how I use it to plan out all of my videos. That's how I use it as a catch-all for all of my ideas. And that's really where every single video starts and every single video ends. But like I said, I use Notion for my personal and my professional content, and this video was on my personal content. 
But as always, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in yeah. the next and video. And when it's all said Peace. and done, I'll be still standing tall. tall. Caught up in a cloud of glory soon as the trumpet calls. Yeah, so when I'm gone, and the time comes for me to move on, joining with the angels singing holy around his throne. So tell my mama to try her out.